So see this thing I just did for my next door neighbor whose daughters, granddaughters, something are uh, graduating from this thing, whatever it is. Uh, all hand lettered on a little board. I used to do thousands and thousands of things like this for Albertsons back in the day because when I first joined Albertsons, there was no such thing as personal computer. Well, they were, there were, but nobody had them and uh, printers and stuff like that. So even a grocery store, uh, you know, they had cash registers and a main computer that would do like batch files to change prices on things and stuff like that. But they did not um, have the capacity to write a memo or, you know, make a little document that you could hang in the window or something like that. That was done by hand. And all the little price signs, uh, not the stickers, but the little price signs uh, that changed every week when they did an ad or something like that, which was thousands of signs uh, per store. That was done by hand by me. <laughs> I did uh, a dozen or so stores in the valley at one point and uh, uh, yeah, did lots of things like that. But that's more or less where my art career began. For those of you who really wanted to know. And um, I have surprisingly enough, almost no tearing screeds or angry words for you today. So um, I'm just going to draw. I'm just going to draw. And uh, if I think of something to spout off about, I'm sure that'll happen. But those little signs that I just showed you, I, I hate them. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do those things anymore. But there's a handful of people that remember that I do that. They're like, oh, can you do this? And it's like you realize I couldn't possibly charge you what I need to charge you. You know, by the hour, you could go to the store and buy a thousand little greeting cards for what I would actually need. So. So I'm doing them for free, basically. photo here with a very interesting picture of a horse and what I now realize is a very dull picture of the rider. He's just stiff and his arms are to his sides, just how it happened to be when he was in, when the camera caught him. So I'm just going to lie. I'm going to have him doing something much more interesting. even show up. Okay. Go back over it here. Wood burning signs. I, I, I've never done that. That's uh, one of the few things. I mean, I've tried all kinds of things. One of the cool things about signs, um, if you're into that, There's a website called Letterville. Um, 
and there's a bulletin board. It's a sign painter's bulletin board. And, uh, well, there's two things that are really cool about it. One is the community is very, very sharing. I mean, I've never found a community of artists that are more willing to tell you exactly to the penny how much they charge for a project, why they, how they came up with that pricing, you know, how much they paid for their materials, which materials they like, which materials they don't like, show you how to use it if you're being confused, you know, um, stuff like that. Um, I've never, never met a community of any kind of professional people who in theory are somewhat in competition with each other, but really they're not. Um, we're just so sharing and so willing to help each other out. Um, the other thing that's cool is that every art technique, material, um, you know, everything has been used to make signs. So on this website, you will meet people who do bronze casting, ceramics, wood burning, uh, Photoshop, uh, embroidery, you know, painting, oil painting, acrylics, sandblasting, stained glass, everything in the world, you know, because somebody wants signs made that way. And so somebody has become an expert in making those kinds of signs. And uh, it's just astounding. Um, the range of knowledge and the wealth of knowledge and the wealth of people who are out there ready to share that knowledge. And I say we're not really in competition with each other because, you know, my particular for, forte, I almost said foreplay, but I think that's something different. Uh, my particular forte was uh, something called window splashes, which is just cheap, quick signs painted on a store window, generally just for a holiday or a sale or something going to get scraped off again in a week and um that was my specialty and i'd go share my work kind of like i do on facebook now i go share my work and other window splashers from all over the world uh would say things like you know i really think you're possibly the best window splasher on the planet um well really if you Believe that it's not threatening to yourself to say so when you live in Australia and I live in Gilbert, Arizona, right? Because um, I would drive as far as Phoenix and, and Goodyear and stuff. And in hindsight, if I had it all to do it over again, I wouldn't. I wouldn't drive that far. I would, I would keep it in my own location because that's the thing about being the best in the world. Um, you don't have to be the best in, on the planet because you don't travel the entire planet, most likely, to do whatever it is you do. So you don't have to be the best on the planet. You have to be the best in your world, which may be Gilbert, Arizona, or Sydney, Australia, or you know something like that. If you're an illustrator, you may be competing with people in China and Taiwan and, and you know, Pakistan and, and whatever. But um, although I wanted to be an illustrator at the time, I wasn't one. I was a sign painter. And um, so it, it was it really is kind of possible from a certain point of view to be the best in the world when you recognize that for each individual person. The world can be a different size, can have different definitions. I have uh, been trying different things since it's been, the writing's been on the wall for a while that the whole nudity on Facebook thing is going to be a problem. Um, 
So I've been like, oh, a couple of years ago, I did a whole bunch of unicorn uh, drawings for for the month of June. Junicorn was a sketch challenge thing, sort of like uh, Inktober, that kind of stuff. And uh, so I did a bunch of unicorn art. <laughs> and I started posting it on some groups, and then I've had people that go, oh, you really need to study how to draw horses. <laughs> and I was like, okay, forget it. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, you get the horse people. And you try to do this Western art, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to get the horse people coming back and going, wow, that's a really cool picture of a cowboy riding some kind of alien beast. Whatever that's supposed to be. Because, no, I don't know horses, even though I live in Gilbert, Arizona. And up until very recently, that was a place to go if you wanted to see horses. But actually, you got to look if you want to find some now. I mean, I know where to find some, but... Now I'm drawing naked horses. That's right. Uh, yep. Shameful. Shameful. It's a scandal. I don't know if I ever told you, Sharon, that I went to Prescott to for something. I, it was a couple times. The last couple times I set foot in the old church um, and discovered that in spite of what I thought, I did not burst into flames or anything. But uh, you see, my dad got married, and my dad had an 80th birthday party. Those were the last two times I was in the church. And uh, it's hard to tell the difference between the two events because they pretty much went the same way. They were on Sunday right after church services. There's a general purpose room over there, and they had a potluck. and uh, there was cake and stuff, and we, <laughs> there was a, both occasions. So <laughs> I can't really clearly remember, but I was there one time, and I was talking to a bunch of the people. And, uh, you know, it's neither here nor there in terms of religion, but um, I was talking to these people and thinking, you know, these people are kind of nice. They're, they're really sweet, and they're really good to my dad and everything, and I Maybe I've been uncharitable, you know, talking about the way they were like, you know, it's been a long time and, you know, this isn't anything about wanting to go back to church or whatever, but I was kind of relaxing my stance on these people. And I was talking to one of the old ladies, uh, you know, knew me when I was a kid. She's still there. She was an old lady when I was a kid. <laughs> She's still an old lady. Um, and then, uh, she says, uh, I hear you're a, you're a good artist. 
Well, of course, I grab my phone. It's what you do, you know? And then I realize, oh, I can't show her my Facebook. I can't show her my Instagram. You know, I can't just open my Dropbox to where all my artwork's just tossed in. You know, it's just like, what What can I show her? And then uh, I thought, well, the goblins, the goblins coloring books. That was a, that was a good thing, you know, and that, you know, it's just fun. And, uh, you know, published a book and everything and talk about that. So I found a folder that was full of my goblin art. And I told her what it was and I showed it to her. And her and one of her friends were looking at it. And, and you know, she looks at it for a while. And then she kind of hands it back to me. And she goes, they're naked. <laughs> I was like, there are frogs. <laughs> but uh, that's... Yeah. Anyway, there it is. There's some things that some people just can never get over. <laughs> They're naked, naked goblins. It never occurred to me the whole time I was doing that project. It never occurred to me that my goblins were naked. You know, it's just like never crossed my mind. But uh, they're naked. I think this horse is too long. I don't know. I still don't know. Huh. That's interesting. Maybe I drew the guy too small. I think that might be. This horse is jumping up in the air, and I got my guy kind of looking forwards, like he's looking over there. Like, yeah, hey, my horse is leaping through the air. I'll just look at the look at the scenery. So I, I think I'll change that too. I'm gonna change that somehow. I'm gonna have him looking down. At something on the ground. So now we're jumping away from something. Yeah, sharing demons. Uh, I get that too sometimes. Surprisingly, I didn't get it then. You know, I, I got it, but I, I have gotten that too. Like, oh, you did that book of demons, which kind of galls me because one of my sets of drawings that I thought about making a coloring book out of, and maybe I still will. Um, but it, it was pictures of things more plainly, you know, little devils, little kind of cute, funny looking, but definitely the devil. And, uh, and I held off because I knew that, you know, my old crowd, um, you know, that just wasn't going to go over at all and i thought there might be quite a few people you know if i'm trying to introduce something into the world you know make a children's coloring book you know and it's the children's coloring book of satan um you know i thought that might just be a problem and it might but having having caught exactly that that crap uh, over what i did do makes me want to just go ahead and do it it's kind of rebellion and it's kind of just like well, it doesn't matter you know it doesn't make any difference what you do i'm working off of this book right here uh, but i really I don't know my horses, and I'm not quite tracking on what the hell this horse's mouth is doing here. 
It's just coming down like this. Coming up like that. In younger years, I invested hundreds of hours in, and probably hundreds of dollars in uh, buying old magazines from used bookstores and taking them home and clipping them up and filling filing cabinets. Sometimes the little, cut, little pictures I cut out were little, you know, and so... I glued them onto a sheet of paper. You know, I had a bunch of little pictures of like horses or something, and I glue them all down to a sheet of paper and glue them onto the other side. And and uh, you know, I just had. Um, well, they were they were genital free. I'm not talking circular, but I I forgot to uh, sc scroll my thing down. Um, Do you think so? Some people would see that as a as a pure fantasy thing. I th I think some people would, um, but then other people have looked at like a painting of a dragon, and they said, "Oh, you know, is, you're into the devil, or you know, uh, you know, and it's a green dragon, you know, very." But to them, that's a demon. That's a that's a devil. Um, so I think what we have is both. And, uh, and like I say, I mean, there are open-minded people, and for them, the product might have appeal, and other people would hate it. But it's already like that, so a lot to help. It almost seems like I was saying something else. I'll know when I play it back. When I play these things back, I go, oh, yeah. You were in the middle of saying something. And then you got derailed. <laughs> it's not your fault. I just do that to myself. You got derailed and said something else and you never finished. So you said some long rambling nonsense thing that was a build up to a point that you never made. Okay. There's a famous Old West illustrator. He came out while the Old West was still the Old West and stayed out here. And uh, ran around with cowboys and saw real Old West stuff going on. Met Indians and, and cowboys. And I don't know if he saw any gunfights or anything, but he, you know, saw lots of stuff and uh went back home to paint scenes so frederick remington lots of lots of old west paintings but they were mostly done i think in new york or new jersey or something where he lived and um he didn't have a camera i don't think when he came out here so did lots of sketches and then all these really cool cowboy and indian paintings um he was working from photographs of uh polo matches and and uh, horse races and things like that and so uh but mostly polo because there's people you know swinging sticks and doing things like that and so um so yeah <laughs> uh he's just using what he had yeah you can't please everybody you're correct you're correct
I was about to blame church, and then I realized how tiresome that must get. So I'll just shut up. Got my background. Got this guy, and he's leaning back. His foot's way up, like this, as it is in the little rodeo picture. Making up the rest of it. So, yeah, I, I liked it better the other night when we were on Zoom because I could hear people saying things <laughs> over my shoulder while I was while I was working. That was good. That's more like being at a at a sci-fi convention or whatever where you're up doing a doing a demo. Sometimes people are just sharing their own stories or asking questions or conversing amongst themselves or whatever. You're just kind of there. Uh, and we do this sketch off where people throw out, uh, well, they tell us what to draw. You know, they just throw out some crazy crazy idea and we draw it so whatever it is on the ground it took him by surprise Sidewinder or maybe just a stick that looks like a snake. All right.
Good suggestions. Good suggestions. All right. Me being me, however. Why go with one snaky tendril when you could go with eight? problem when you're out here riding in the desert. There's the uh, angry Palo Verde octopus. Saw a story, you probably saw it too. With the beaches closed, there was a somebody had video of uh, hundreds of octopuses climbing out of the water and, and walking around on the beach where there's usually hundreds of people. And you don't see that scene. And people are mystified. And I don't see why anybody's mystified. I mean, for them. It's got to be like going swimming, right? I mean, you know, they got an opportunity. It's a, there's none of those dangerous things up on the land. Let's go for a swim. So they climb up on the beach and swim around. It's a desert octopus, so naturally it's covered in spines. Very frequent question that gets asked of myself and other creative types, at least at Phoenix sci-fi conventions, which is most of the sci-fi conventions I've ever been to. Um, people say, where, where do your ideas come from? And uh, 
I don't know, for me, very frequently, I, I, I know that what they're imagining is that I thought, I'm going to draw a picture of a guy his horse is bucking because there was a spiny desert octopus on the ground, you know, and they, they were like, well, where did that come from? Um, well, that's just it. It didn't. Right. I mean, I was going to draw a picture of a guy, uh, you know, of a cowboy with a gun in his hand looking off over there. And the horse was just, you know, dramatically uh, doing this pose. And, and then I just realized, no, the horse looks like it's, jumping away from something on the ground so i've got to have the guy reacting to something on the ground and then sharon said snake and i thought octopus and you know there you are so uh, i thought octopus because i i just do I, I don't know, just that kind of guy i'm an octopus kind of guy but uh yeah that's where ideas come from it's, they come from screwing up and uh rolling with it Absolutely every time I sit down to make a video, I get out my phone, I open up the little uh, clock app, set a timer for 30 minutes, and I set it here. And when the video's good to go, I, you know, gonna hit the start button and I'm gonna have a timer go off in 30 minutes and tell me to shut up and stop the video. And, uh, Invariably, something inexplicable happens, <laughs> and I wind up fussing with the computer and fussing with the computer and fussing with the computer, just like I did here a few minutes ago. I was, you know, I was online, I was navigating around, answering things on Facebook and liking this and responding to that, and then I hit go live, and the computer said, "There's no internet," <laughs> and it's done that to me a dozen times. So. Uh, I don't understand, but uh, then I forget. When I finally am on, I forget to hit the clock. And so that's a long-winded way of saying it's been 37 minutes, and um, I hope you're all having a good day. I hope, uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. The uh, not expected, good, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, but, yeah, it, it really isn't brilliance so much as being willing to roll with some weird thing that just went tumbling by and you just go, Oh yeah, that I'll, I'll do that. Um, so, uh, yeah, our governor quasi reopened to the state today. Not, I don't think it's was supposed to be entirely. I think it's just uh, to a limited extent. Um, but that's probably a mistake. <laughs> we'll find out, I guess. Um, friend of ours that works at the hospital said, you know, one of the requirement, one of the things they're looking at to make a decision like that is whether or not the hospital has open beds. <clears throat> so he said, you know, basically the last few waves of Corona victims are either dead or gotten better or are stable enough to go home and be sick at their house. And um, so there are available beds. So that doesn't mean it's safe to go out now. It's It means when you go out and get sick, <laughs> you can go die at the hospital instead of having to do it, you know, laying on the ground by the canal. So I guess that's an improvement. I don't know. Um, anyway, that's all I got. That's all I got. Um, I think today is Friday. And unless everything's changed more than I realized, that would make tomorrow Saturday. And then um, Saturday night, local time, 5 o'clock, we're going to do wine and art with Gilead. And um, see you, Sharon. Um, 
So if you want to pour yourself some wine or just think of something to whine about um, and join me at 5 o'clock, that would be 8 o'clock p.m. on the East Coast and God knows what in between. Um, so, yeah, that would be uh, that would be great. We did it last week. It was an absolute disaster because the link didn't work and people had to try three or four or five or ten times. And uh, that'll probably happen again. But uh, a few people joined us and it was fun once it finally started happening. And I expect that until we become experts at it, it's going to be like that. So um, please join us. So talk to you then. Bye bye.